Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over the topic of mandatory IFR reporting points. It's important when you're flying an IFR flight plan that you are in constant contact with ATC and following the appropriate frequencies so that you can report fixes that you're crossing over um, or wherever ATC required you to report information about the status of your flight. In addition, there's certain specific things that you need to report, and you need to report this information uh, differently depending if you're in radar or non-radar conditions. So we're going to go over all that information in this video, so stay tuned. All right, mandatory IFR reporting points. There are two types of mandatory reporting points when flying under IFR. Those that are under radar contact and those that are not under radar contact. So per 91.183, unless otherwise ATC authorized, the pilot in command of each aircraft operating under IFR in controlled airspace must ensure that a continuous watch is maintained on the appropriate frequency and must report the following as soon as possible. Time and altitude of passing each designated reporting point or the reporting points specified by ATC, except that while the aircraft is under radar control, only the passing of those reporting points specifically requested by ATC need be reported. Number two, any unforecasted weather conditions encountered. And three, any information relating to the safety of the flight. So IFR position reporting items to be included in the report. The aircraft identification or tail number, the position of the aircraft relative to where it is relative to a specific fix, the time, the altitude or flight level, the aircraft's flying, the type of flight plan, uh, though it's not required in an IFR reports made directly to um, an air route traffic control center or approach control. Uh, the estimated time of arrival and name of next reporting point, the name only of the next succeeding reporting point along the route of flight, and any relevant remarks. Now we'll get into specifically the mandated IFR reporting points associated with being in radar contact. Again, per 91.183, pilots should report any reporting points specifically requested by ATC, any unforecasted weather conditions encountered, and any other information, again, relating to the safety of the flight. Now, per AIM 5-3-3, the following reports should be made to ATC or flight service station facilities without a specific ATC request when in radar contact. Number one, when vacating any previously assigned altitude or flight level. When an altitude change will be made if operating on a clearance specifying VFR on top. When unable to climb or descend at a rate of at least 500 feet per minute. When approach has been missed, uh, request clearance for specific action, i.e. to an alternate airport or another approach that you'd like to do. Uh, a change in the average true airspeed at cruising altitude when it varies by 5% or 10 knots uh, from what is filed in the flight plan, whichever is greater between the 5% and the 10 knots. The time and altitude or flight level upon reaching a holding fix or point to which was cleared. When leaving any assigned holding fix or point. And lastly, any loss in control airspace of VOR, TACAN, ADF, low frequency navigation receiver, GPS anomalies, um, anything to do with a partial loss of the ILS receiver, uh, these reports should include aircraft identification, the equipment affected, to the degree to which the capability of operating FR in the ATC uh, system is impaired, and the nature and extent of assistance desired from ATC. All right, mandatory IFR reporting points when not in radar contact. Again, per 91.183, pilots should report any reporting points specifically requested by ATC, any unforecasted weather conditions encountered, and any other information relating to the safety of the flight. And then again, per AIM 5-3-3, the following report should be made to ATC or flight service station facilities without a specific ATC request when not in radar contact. They include, again, all of the required reports when in radar contact per the AIM 5-3-3. And in addition, when leaving a final approach fix or an outer marker inbound on final approach for a non-precision approach, or when leaving the outer marker or fix used in lieu of the outer marker inbound on a final approach, for example, with a precision approach. And then lastly, the estimated time of arrival change in excess of plus or minus two minutes or plus or minus three minutes for flights in the North Atlantic. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of mandatory IFR reporting points and what the differences are when you're operating in radar environment versus in non-radar environment. 
Anyways, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.